welcome students so we are in the process of discussing the ratio analysis and in the last part of discussion we have discussed we have talked about the uh, say first set, uh, category of the ratios that was the roi ratios and uh, these ratios are we talked about there we talked about the three ratios that is return on net worth that is earning per share and cash earning, earning per share then we have the next set of the ratios that is they are called as the solvency ratios and solvency ratios are solvency ratios solvency ratios solvency means as the word says solvency i told you in the past also that solvency means how strengthful how strong the firm is how strengthful or how strong the form is that is the solvency. So, uh, in this case solvency ratios tell us about the performance of the company, about the overall financial and operating health of the company, largely we talk about the financial health of the company. So, solvency is means there are two words solvency and insolvency solvency and insolvency. So, when it is solvency, how strengthful the company is, how strengthful the financial structure of the company is and insolvency means when the company is not doing well that is the insolvency. Now, solvency we want to study that how strengthful the company is, how strong the company is, what is the future uh, scope of the growth of the company because ultimately you need the funds. When you need the funds, you uh, have to look at it from the two angles. Every company has certain borrowing capacity and if that borrowing capacity is already exhausted, then we do not have the future or the further borrowing capacity for expansion, diversification and any kind of growth. One. But if that capacity is not exhausted, it means company is doing the entire business from its own resources. There are two sources of doing the business. One source is the internal sources of funds and internal sources of funds and second is the external sources of funds. Internal sources of fund is that the funds come from the shareholders or the owners of the company and that is the share capital. First this is the share capital and then it is the reserves and surplus or you call it as reserve and surplus or you call it as free reserves. Free reserves, reserve and surplus or free reserves these are the internal funds. So, when we start the business initially when we start the business maybe as a sole provider as a partnership firm or as a private company or as a public company we have only internal source of the fund until unless we go to the venture capitalist venture capitalist can provide us the external source of funding but they have so many there are so many disadvantages of the venture capitalist as rate of return their interference in the company's management and so on and so forth so we normally do not like to go to the venture capitalist if it is uh, having if, if it is sufficient to have the funds from the internal sources and then doing the business at the uh, say lower scale at the smaller level at with these funds and then developing or generating the funds internally growing with the capital appreciating the capital and then when the company reaches at a point at a level when the solvency of the company increases, when the strengths of the company increase, increase, then outside funding also start becoming available. External sources also start pouring in in the in the in the kitty of the company's funds. So, for example, you talk about the loans. If we are going to set up a new company or a new business organization, business firm, we if you go to the bank that please I, I want to start a company my requirement is 20 lakhs I have got 10 lakhs with me and you give me 10 lakh rupees with me bank would say that what is the credibility of your company and what is the security of our funds. 
So finally, you whatever the way you try to convince them, they may say that no, no, it is not possible. First you prove your credibility and once we feel that our funds are secured and our investment is going to have the uh, say fruitful return, then it is fine, we can think about you. So initially you do not have the funds. So you have the funds only internal funds that is the share capital and first year of the operations we will do with that at the lower scale and we earn the profit in the first year, second year, third year, then we will keep on reinvesting that profit back in the capital. Initially we do not draw any dividend out of the company's investments, we do not draw any dividend out of the company's investment. So only it is a share capital and then we create the reserves. Reserves and surpluses we create and we add it back and then cap capital of the company keep on appreciating, appreciating and appreciating. And when continuously we have the profitability and profitability in the firm is growing, so ultimately you see the solvency of the firm is growing. When the solvency means strengths of the financial strengths of the firms are growing, in that case you can expect that now many external sources will also be available. So in this case we talk about first the internal source of funds and we would like to exhaust these internal source of funds, share capital, reserve and surplus and free reserves completely and after that we will look forward for or towards the external funds or external sources of the funds and external source of funds are like bank loans or debentures or bonds or something like that or maybe selling the coming out with an IP in the market or selling the shares in the market to some extent that is also called as external source though later on it becomes the internal source but those potential shareholders would also, would also be interested to buy the shares from of your company if we have proven track record and we are going to assurance to the people that yes we are going to give them a better or the assured returns then only the people are going to buy the shares of the company till then even in a public limited company also IPOs are not brought in. Initial promoters, seven promoters provide the funds, they make investment of the capital and they do not uh, like to go for the IPO because if the, the company does not enjoy a good brand name or good reputation in the market and if company comes out with an IPO and if the IPO is not properly subscribed or well subscribed, in that case it creates the problem. So till then we have to use the internal sources that is the funds provided by the initial seven shareholders and then the profits and profits have to be reinvested back and when we keep on say when this the capital base improves or strengthens then the external sources can be expected. So it means in the solvency ratios we have to think about that how much internal funds were invested by the firm, how these funds are utilized by the firm, how much wealth is created by utilizing the internal sources of the funds by the company and then how we can expect or to what extent we can ex say expect the external support or the external sources or the support from the external sources. So here it is the uh, first ratio which we are going to calculate here is that is the NAB, net asset value or first solvency ratio is the NAB which is called as net asset value and this net, net asset value is that is the equity shareholders fund, equity shareholders fund divided by total number of total number of equity shares equity shares outstanding total number of equity shares outstanding nab oh sorry nab means net earth asset value net asset value means or you can call it as net worth net worth divided by total number of equity shares outstanding, net worth divided by the total number of equity shares outstanding means how much shares are there in the market sold by the company and how much shares are represented or justified by the net worth of the company how much net worth is there and how much total number of equity shares are there. For example, net worth of the company is 10,000 and then total number of shares are 1,000. It means net worth per share is 10 rupees, net worth per share is 10 rupees. Now there may be a case that the company has only net worth, they have not borrowed even a single penny from the market. 
whatever the investment is made that is made because net worth is paid up capital, paid up equity capital, paid up capital plus free reserves, plus free reserves these are the two things. So, paid up capital means capital contributed by the seven shareholders plus free reserves are those reserves which are now finally owned by or are available to the equity shareholders. It has no claim against or it has nobody else has a claim against the free reserves. So, these are the two things which make the net worth and if you see if the total business by the company is being run with the help of net worth all the assets are funded from the net worth only that is a paid up capital and free reserves in that case you can make out that what is the solvency position of the firm. For example, some company started the business initially with a sum of rupees 1 lakh, sum of rupees 1 lakh and today say after say uh, 3 years the company's the total net worth has become 2 lakhs. It means they have added 1 lakh worth of rupees from the internal generation. They have efficiently used their own money that is 1 lakh rupees and they have generated a profit almost one third of the capital is added every year in the form of the profit and now the company's net worth has become 2 lakh rupees and there is not even a single penny as the outsider's uh, obligation or outsider's fund that is the loan or the borrowed capital or the borrowed money. Now, how strengthful it is that 2 lakh rupees it means it is a highly profitable firm they are earning about 33 percent of the profit every year and they are appreciating their capital by reinvesting that entire amount of the profit and in the 3 years period of time 1 lakh rupees of the net worth or the capital has become 2 lakh rupees it means 100 percent increase. Now, you see in this situation if they want to come out with an IPO and if they give this kind of information in the newspaper or in the electronic media everybody will be all out to subscribe to the shares of this company. Second thing is that if they want to borrow money from the financial institutions or from any other source then there is no issue at all, there is no problem at all. Every banker would be say, say would be means all the leading banks would be lining up outside the office of this company that this firm company's uh, say solvency structure is so strong, financial structure is so strong, this company is so solvent that it is the uh, say generating very good returns, very good profits and uh, means if you talk about the potential shareholders they say that very good return on investment will be available because of the very high solvency of the company one and second thing would be that financial institutions will feel their investment is highly secured in the firm. So, they would like to lend a sizable sum of the money to this company. So, NAB means net worth divided by the total number of equity shares and net worth is how much times because it is basically telling to the firm or to the external stakeholders maybe the new shareholders or to the financial institutions the intentions of the existing shareholders, the intentions and efficiency of the existing management that intentions of the existing shareholders is that they are flowing back larger part of the profit into the firm. Whatever the returns investment they have made, whatever the return they are getting now larger ex to, to larger extent or larger part of that is being flowed back in the business and by that way the capital is appreciating, the capital is growing, capital, capital is appreciating. Now, if you have and this is one important indicator also when the financial institutions lend money or maybe anybody has to lend to the uh, any, any source has to lend the money to the financial uh, so to the business undertakings they should also look at this particular indicator that what part of the profit company has earned and reinvested back in the business. If the larger part of the profit is reinvested back in the business it means the intention of the initial shareholders and the management is to grow with the company and to carry on the business to the commanding heights. But if the larger chunk of the profit is being grabbed by the existing shareholders and very little amount is being flowed back in the company and for the investment needs the company is looking towards the external sources in that case you can easily make out the intentions of the company is to shareholders and management that they do not have the good intentions and to carry on the business for the longer duration they would like to they would like to close down the business 
in a in the near future. So, it means the investment made by any external entity is not safe. So, solvency NAV means net asset value means that what part of the net assets is funded. Now, for example, if you have this balance sheet with us and here you are saying that uh, we have the paid up capital, paid up capital plus free reserves plus free reserves in that case and total all assets your fixed assets and your current assets if they both are financed from these two sources it means net assets value or the net worth of the company is fully represented by the share uh, existing shareholders or the existing number of shares in the company and they have not borrowed every single penny and larger chunk of this capital has come by play, plowing back of the profit by creating and appreciating the free reserves available, it means it is a very good company, very solvent company and a very good uh, potential institution for the investment. But if it is the reverse that the net worth is very low, major financing of these assets in the balance sheet is from the external source by borrowing the money and everything, in that case company solvency position is not good. So, NAB is a very good indicator, very good ratio which can tell us about that how the company is expected to do in the future, what is the financial health of the company and how it can do the business. This is the first ratio in the solvency ratios. Second ratio is the in the solvency ratios is the debt equity ratio DE, debt equity ratio. DE ratio, debt equity ratio. Now, what is a debt equity ratio or what is DE, DE ratio? Debt equity ratio is debt equity ratio is total debt divided by total equity. Total debt divided by total equity or the paid up capital. That is the debt equity ratio or you call it as the debt to equity ratio means uh, total debt when we talk about we talk about the long term, we do not include the short term debt in this ratio, long term debt and the total equity that is or you can say that is the total capital, I would not say total equity it is the total capital debt equity ratio means total capital and when you say total capital, it includes the equity capital and plus preference capital. This is the ratio between the total long term debt and the total equity of the firm. In other way around, if you look at this ratio, this is a ratio between the internal funds and the external funds or you can say that this is a ratio of owned funds and the borrowed funds. Now, see that every company has some borrowing capacity. And in the standard as per the literature available in the financial management, this ratio is expected to be 2 is to 1, this is the standard rule of thumb, 2 is to 1. When we talked about the previous ratio that is NAB, here you can say there is no standard rule of thumb of interpreting that ratio, but simply you can say higher the ratio better it is, because in the numerator you have the net worth. So, higher the net worth and the lesser number of the equity shares, it means the ratio will be very high. So, higher the ratio better it is and if the ratio is not that high then it is not good. Similarly, when we talk about the debt equity ratio, the standard rule of thumb of the debt equity ratio is 2 is to 1. It means if you invest 1 rupee that is 2 means debt and equity is 1, it means if you invest 1 rupee here then you can expect to borrow 2 rupees from the market. If you invest 1 rupee from your own pocket as a shareholder or as the owner of the company, you can expect 2 rupees from the market that is the ratio of 2 is to 1, that is the ratio of 2 is to 1 debt equity ratio. Now, for example, if the total debt component is very high, this ratio is for example 4 is to 1, it means the company has already borrowed a huge amount from the external sources, whereas their internal investment or the investment from the internal sources is very, very low. In that case, now you see that one indication is that the magnitude of the external funds being very high as compared to the internal funds, it means the company's overall solvency position is not good. 
Second thing is that if for the further expansion and growth, if company want to borrow the funds from the market rather than invest being invested from the pocket by the shareholder, then the scope is very, very less because they have already exhausted their borrowing capacity. So once these two things are there, in that case, the solvency is indicated by this ratio. So if this ratio is, for example, uh, there is no external debt. Now you look at that there is nothing, the numerator is 0, that is 0 is to 1. It means the company has not borrowed even a single penny and entire funding is being done from the internal sources. It means look at the saved borrowing capacity of the firm saved borrowing capacity of the firm that how much money they can borrow from the market. So, if their own net worth is 2 lakh rupees minimum 4 lakh rupees they can borrow from the market and company's capital base can be taken to the 6 lakhs, company's base can be taken to the 6 lakhs. It means there can be 3 times growth, there is a financial 3 times financial requirement there can be 3 times growth. So, we have to look at that that what is the debt equity ratio and by calculating this ratio you look at that the fund solvency structure of the firm that to what extent the borrowing capacity has been exhausted by the firm and how much is still left, how much is still preserved and how much they can expect to borrow more from the market that is one thing right. And if they have fully exhausted then the future scope is limited, but if they have not exhausted at all, future scope is very good. And if they have partially exhausted, then yes, you can expect that this company can still grow. That if this company expects, or if they have to borrow more funds from the market, they have to invest their own internal funds also. So, in that case, if the company is a profit making funds, they have to stop paying the dividend and increase the total profit to be reinvested back in the business, that magnitude has to be increased. Or second thing is that if they are uh, expecting, so they have to increase the profitability, they have to increase the solvency of the firm, they have to increase the net worth of the firm, then they can expect the borrowing. But you see this, uh, this ratio is only a guiding uh, rule of thumb that is a 2 is to 1, that is a debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1. But you see if you analyze the balance sheets of the company, you might see that uh, uh, some company might have the ratios like uh, 4 is to 1, 5 is to 1, 6 is to 1 or sometimes 10 is to 1. So that is not the case that this ratio is not binding any financial institution to lend to the companies. This company, this ratio is not binding. If the lender is assured about that yes, his returns are safe and secured or his funds are safe and secured, if his investment is safe and secured and there is nothing to worry about the investment, then he has not to look for it. It may be possible that the investor is not investing from his own sources, but he is uh, borrowing more from the market. And if the lender is convinced that whatever is lending to him, his investment is secured, his total uh, funds are secured, he is getting good return on his investment or his lending, in that case the ratio can go up to 10 uh, times. You might have seen, uh, heard about the Vijay Malia's case. Now, Vijay Mali has got lot of money borrowing from the banks and in that case today when the banks are being asked that how uh, this lending was given 9000 plus crores were given by the banks to the uh, a single person or the person or the companies being uh, largely being held by a single person, there is not security not at all even the net worth was not good, his own investment in the in his own companies was not very high, a larger part of the business was funded by borrowed capital by loans from the financial institutions and that is largely from the banks. So, you see that today when the banks are being asked that why you lend so much of the money when the net worth was not very high, they simply say only, only, only on the basis of the brand name, Kingfisher brand name on the basis of that they have lent huge amount of the money to the to, to the companies of Vijay Malia and today that brand name when they had it is a flop show and it has not worked well in the market. Now, there is no security, there is no uh, say you can call it as a, a collateral taken, no security is taken. Now, the funds are at the risk and almost you see that they are almost the larger part of the funds will become the bad debts. So, debt equity ratio means it tells about what is the borrowing capacity of the firm, what part of the borrowing capacity has been utilized by the firm, what part is left to be utilized and how they can expect to further borrow the money from the market and normal rule of thumb for this ratio is 2 is to 1, but it can be more than 2 is to 1 also if the lender is assured of proper returns, better returns, effective returns from the 
company in which the investment is being made, made by the lenders. Then is the next ratio we are going to talk is two more ratios we are going to talk about here is that is one is the ICR interest coverage ratio and then second I will be talking about after this is the debt service coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio when we talk about we take here that is a numerator is profit after tax plus interest on long term debt interest on long term debt plus non cash charges and divided by the interest on the long term debt interest on long term debt interest on long term debt that plus non cash charges plus interest on the long term loans. This ratio is going to tell us about the interest paying capacity of the firm. How much interest the firm is going to pay because for paying the interest it is a revenue expense and for the paying the interest on any loan borrowed by the company you must have the liquid resources and the liquidity comes number one from the profit if it is a cash profit larger part. Second thing is you have to first add back the interest which is already paid so that if it is not paid then that money is also available plus that depreciation fund non cash charges like depreciation fund that sometime if you do not have the cashability of the profit sufficient profits are not available or the profits are there but cash profits are not there then the depreciation fund can be used limited normally for the short duration and when we convert that nominal profit into the cash profit then the depreciation fund can be replenished back. So, how many times the total liquidity liquid funds are available with the firm as against the total interest component that the industry the company has to pay maybe say monthly rent, six monthly rent or quarterly uh, sorry say monthly interest, six monthly interest or quarterly interest or year end interest once in a year like that. So, in that case the it is, is talking about the interest paying capacity of the firm. If the interest paying capacity of the firm is high then still it can expect to borrow more money of from the market because the solvency structure is very good. But if the interest paying capacity is not high in that case they cannot expect to borrow more from the market and in that case their borrowing capacity will be reducing. So, it means what should be the ratio as high as possible there is no standard rule of thumb but it should be minimum 2 to 3 times of the denominator and if it is more than that is really very good but it should be really high uh, to the extent it is possible. And one more ratio we will be talking under this category that is a debt service coverage ratio. In this we include we keep everything same but in the denominator we uh, add one more thing is that the installment of the principal to be paid, installment of the principal to be paid installment of the principal to be paid that is interest on long term debt interest on long term debt plus installment on principal. So, here when we return the loan taken in any particular year we return two things one we return the interest on the loan and second we return the installment of the principal. So, interest may be the monthly payment, installment may be the 6 monthly or once in a year or quarterly. So, in this case also now we increase the this is the ratio that is the PAT plus interest on long term debts plus non cash charges this is the numerator which will remain the same in both the ratios, but the denominator will change and in case of the DSCR we will add in the interest on the long term debt we will add the interest on this installment of the principal part also and then we see that how much is we are going to pay how much is due on account of the loan to be serviced back and how much cash is available how much liquidity is available with the firm and again the ratio should be as high as possible as big as possible because higher the liquidity is better for the financial institutions because they can expect that the firm will never default and the refunds will be or the return uh, interest on the loan will be paid back on time principal will also be coming back on the time their funds are safe and secured and this is the ultimate objective of any financial institution that their 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 lending should be same and their lending or their 
loan should be growing that they, that should be earning the good rate of the interest also. So, these are the four issues which we have discussed under the solvency category and then we will be talking about the other issues and then we will discuss a case in which we will calculate all the ratios, interpret them about that company and try to find out about the financial health of that company and that all I will discuss in my next lectures. Thank you.